back in 2014, I was a 911 operator. I had like a history of um, acne and eczema. You know, everything you buy from the stores, like nothing was working. I was going to the dermatologist and, right. and things just weren't like giving me the results I wanted. So I started like experimenting with things. Well, what, when you go to the spas, what do they put on your face? And what are these masks? And right. I started getting ingredients myself in China. I was like, ah, let me just try to make a soap. Hey, this is Epicenter NYC. We connect our communities to news, information, and each other. I'm your host, Amber Castillo. Danielle Copper suffered from severe eczema in her teens and early 20s. And despite numerous consultations with dermatologists and treatments like antibiotics, creams, and cortisone shots, her condition didn't improve. Motivated by this ongoing struggle, she began researching natural ingredients. The process led Danielle to create her own skincare products, starting with a face soap. She saw an immediate improvement in her skin and confidence. Encouraged by her own results, Danielle left her job as a 911 operator and founded Agamem's Beauty to help others with similar issues. The company is built on the idea of using these natural ingredients to provide effective skincare solutions. But this isn't Danielle's first experience as an entrepreneur. At just 12 years old, she helped run her first small business, a jewelry making collective with her cousins. This helped her learn how to bring customers' vision to life. And decades later, at the start of her journey in beauty, Danielle went back to her family roots of crafters to choose the company's name. Aga Mem's beauty is inspired by her grandfather, who had had dreams of starting a beaded jewelry business together. Specifically, it's named after his fraternity name from Omega Sci-Fi at Ithaca College, Agamemnon. Today, I sit down with Danielle to hear more about her journey. Let's jump in. I went full time after I had my son. So sometime between 2015 and 2016. Yeah, once I made that first soap and everybody's like, ooh, sell it. <laughs> You know, that's when I started, you know, marketing to other friends and family. It was mostly word of mouth at first. How did this idea come about? Like, did you want to do this for a long time? No, I, I never thought of making um, products. Uh, I want to say back in 2014, I was a 911 operator. And I and I, I had, like, a history of um, acne and eczema. You know, everything you buy from the stores, like, nothing was working. I was going to the dermatologist, and, right. and things just weren't, like, giving me the results I wanted. So I started, like, experimenting with things. Well, what? When you go to the spas, what do they put on your face? And what are these masks? And right. I started getting ingredients myself in China. I was like, ah, let me just try to make a soap. That's how that, that started. And once I saw results from more natural products, faster than those I was buying from the stores it was a no-brainer oh. but um definitely wasn't an easy process starting a business in general and perfecting one soap no definitely not so when you were going to the dermatologist some of these products was it about also like how your skin was responding to it or was it just about like if you could talk through that a little bit like oh my good goodness you know like there's so many ingredients and this was it also about like how it felt yeah, it was it was more so uh, going to the dermatologist and then injecting um, the acne breakouts, like each individual pimple on oh, my face with cortisone. I see. So you're getting poked in your face, Intense. and it didn't leave your face looking very, you know, attractive afterwards. <laughs> I mean, it, it did help the swelling, but then yeah. And then they've only with with severe acne, they prescribed you like antibiotics, mm -hmm. and we all know what antibiotics can do to the body. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. very happy with it. I was just like, ah. And I'm, I come from a very creative family, like artists and things yeah. like that. So I was like, I can make something. You thought, let me try, let me try making some of my own, like, was it cleansing soaps or like for Yeah, your face? like I, I wanted a soap for my face. Right, right. And how, how did you go about, like, even the starting point for how to experiment? Research. <laughs> what, what kind of I research? Thought, I it? thought of um, when I go to a spa, they use like some, sometimes they use like the clay masks. So uh -huh. I was like, hmm, let me look into these clays. Like, cause I want to know what they put on our faces because I love the experience at a spa, right? So I just, I started researching like detoxing clays, things for eczema, like good essential oils and things for eczema and acne breakouts. And it led me to a lot of trial and error with trying to source the right products 
mm-hmm. the right ingredients and then um, make it. You yeah. know, like a lot of I, I, I've had a lot of different soaps before the one I made for my baby shower, before I perfected that one. So it was just, you know, trial and error, researching, throwing stuff together, yeah. seeing if it worked. Do you remember any uh, researchers or, or sites that were especially helpful when you were going down that rabbit hole? Pinterest and Google. Okay. And then on Google, like, were, were is it mostly from dermatologists or like, mo- or certain? No. no, I would just type in like, um, remedies for like eczema uh-huh like, so more um, of the essential, natural yeah essential oils for eczema um clay masks and just see what pops up and then like go deeper into those topics and look at ingredients and things try to find where i can even buy those natural ingredients yeah and was it for a certain skin type like sensitive or like acne prone that you were looking for or in or in for the different uh-huh. it was just acne prone eczema and oily and how Just did for me first? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you were because <laughs> they came out of necessity, right? What was that like? Because I'd imagine that you would also like maybe be nervous about because you know your 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 skin is like sensitive or your skin has um like a certain condition, so you might be nervous about yeah. like too much experimentation. Like, were there days where like your face stung or you had certain strong reactions? No, I found as I found the most natural ingredients I could possibly find. Once I perfected that, I literally got rid of everything that was in my my closet. Well, for soap first, right? Soap was the first thing. So whatever soap I was using, once I got perfected my first soap, then I got rid of the soap that we were buying that wasn't helping. And the soap, is it like a milky soap or like a transparent? Like, how do you describe the texture? It's kind of creamy. It's creamy. It's very moisturizing. You want to know the name of it? Yes. What is it? (laughs) The first soap that I perfected was hemp soap. H-E-M-P. Okay. Can you describe a little bit of the trial and error, though? Like, I know you said, um, you know, all of the ingredients, maybe because they were natural, like your skin liked. But were there any Um, that, like, in terms of the combinations themselves... Okay, so I will say in the beginning when I was experimenting with soap, I went again to Michael's, Uh and they had already made soap bases that, you know, it's milk, they call melt and pour. So I would try those out, I would get like uh, an essential oil I wanted in it, like lavender or something, put some other ingredients that I might want in it. And the process with that was finding out that whatever I was getting from that particular store wasn't the most natural and it had a a chemical smell when I melted it you know so that let me know that maybe this is not right though I used I did it a couple of times for the trial and error purposes to see if it was soapy enough to see if it smelled good to see if it felt good right but the smell when trying to combine everything with that particular soap because of its already strong smell let me know that that wasn't the right thing so I went back to the drawing board to find more natural melt and pour soap bases because you can make soap from scratch Mm -hmm. but it also involves more chemicals and if if done wrong it create you know it could create a a very toxic reaction yeah when you went back to the drawing board can you speak more about that so like since especially since you were saying that you know that you need to be careful when you're um when you're doing things from scratch yeah, it's like, you know, uh, make sure you got good ventilation in the, in the, in the house. Make sure you follow uh-huh. the instructions properly because things heated at a certain temperature can mm-hmm. can cause, you know, like a toxic reaction. Not just not yeah. just like in the process you're making it. So you're, mm-hmm. you're thinking in terms of smell right. um, of fumes in the space that you're working in. Right. So with a soap that already had a... a a weird smell to me trying to add the essential oils and things that I wanted you can't add too much I'm, I'm adding a lot to try to cover mm-hmm. the smell so that didn't necessarily give me a skin reaction but definitely the smell the combination of it you know you always want to make sure you're, you're doing the right mes- measurements as to not mess up the recipe but that's a part of the trial and error right did you have other folks you were uh, trying things out in, in the early stages or was that just you oh no of course my friends my family i'll be like hey i made this i made a cup like a small batch uh-huh give everybody give everybody samples to try 
and they would let me know if it smelled good, if it lathered enough for them, if it lathered good on a washcloth, if it lathered well on a loofah, Mm -hmm. um, how their skin felt after using it, all of those things. How, how long did it take for it to, to melt down, you know, as they use it, you know, um, things like that. And what, how long would you say was that, um, experimentation process? How long did it last? I still do it. Yeah. It's a continuous thing. Um, because you meet new customers, someone might have a custom order they need, you know, depending on their allergies. So it's a continuous thing. It never stops. Let, let's see. You have the virtual consultations, and then even even so, people can still rec- like make special requests for it. Yeah, in there. because you know, because um, like I said, people have allergies, and some people don't even know what type of allergies they have. But if they do, they can. If they look on the site, they can see the ingredients that are in it. They can let me know. Okay, I'm allergic to this and this and that, and I'll say, okay, I can I can customize it. I can tailor it to what you need. Yeah. And I see that you um under your bustle uh, your your bundles you also have you have the breast cancer warrior bundle. Um yeah. I'm wondering, yeah, could you speak a little bit about that and and you know what made you want to raise awareness in this way or because um I had a couple of people close to me that had passed from breast cancer or that are that are going through okay. not even just breast cancer but different um cancers because there's so many of them um yeah. and realizing that the products in the bundle are those that help them feel more alive um make them feel more like themselves after chemo um yeah. my friend's mother I, actually she's on the list my friend yeah um whose mother has uh you know um it's a breast cancer mm-hmm. survivor, yeah. a breast cancer warrior, yeah. as she says. Um, those those were the same products that um, she consistently uses. Yeah, you know because chemo radiation can dry out your skin, and mm. you know once I, you know everybody always tells me how how the products make them feel. They see mm-hmm. changes in their skin. They feel more confident. They're yeah. glowing. Their hair's growing. Things like that. Those those are. The reasons why I keep doing what I'm doing and, and keep trying to cater to everyone I possibly can and make them feel good. Oh, that's Because I know during my struggle, I was not feeling good with my skin looking the way it was, you know. Yeah. What has this meant to you, that that process? That this whole process has meant that I've, I've helped so many people yeah. um, build their confidence back, heal their skin in a more natural way, um, feel good about themselves are there other factors that you think helps with your success in running this business definitely there were community events they were being able to go to events and and network with people yeah and um give them samples of products tell them what i was doing and network with people that kind of not not just fell in the same line of skincare but Maybe had other things that can complement skincare too, like um, healthy mm-hmm. teas and things, healthy healthy foods like sassy sweet. Like there's um, yeah. vegan events that I've done. There's regular events that I've done where there's like they have food vendors and things like that. It's just yeah. a whole network of people in the community, definitely because a lot of the people I met, we all live close to each other on in Southeast Queens. Yeah, are there any important learnings or insights things that helps with your business that you remember from some of these fellow like entrepreneurs or folks you met at events never give up (laughs) continue researching and learning and expanding yeah continue to be innovative continue to monitor the markets that you're in ask for help (laughs) (laughs) delegate responsibilities to others hire like i have uh, a mentor who handles my marketing things like that like don't be afraid to ask for help you can't be the one woman or one man show all the time you know you know you want to train people to help you with certain things like somebody to handle social media someone to answer the emails someone to help make the products because if anything happens to me no one else can make them i also sat down with sheree kunley Sherry is a registered dietitian, the CEO and founder of Share Vitality, and also an Agamem's beauty customer. Here's what she had to say about how Danielle's products have helped her. So how do you know Danielle? 
I actually, I met Danielle, I believe, in 2021. Okay. At the farmer's market. Okay. Uh, I'm also a vendor as well, health and wellness, and she does skincare. And what were what were your first impressions? Oh, my first impression of her, she was definitely um, welcoming. She had a bubbly, warm personality. Um, she's very knowledgeable about her craft. She's passionate about it. Uh, she was able to express like testimonials regarding how the skincare helped herself with her eczema yeah. and her son. You've tried some products. I tried. She has a great product. She has even hair oil. We both have locks, so we had similarities. Okay. Um, so I tried her hair oil serum, which is really nourishing. I also use her soap, and she has um, a body butter. What do you think uh, makes some of her products unique? Uh, well, they actually work as far as, um, like, when I come back from vacation and my skin is stripping or dry, um, mm-hmm. when I apply her products, it doesn't just disappear. Like, the yeah. moisture, it retains moisture, it like elasticity. Her products are so good that we even collaborated together i use because i make herbal tea uh-huh. and she created a soap bar so okay. we have a soap bar with um herbal tea and you know she created it into a soap so you get all those antioxidants and everything is anti-aging for the skin uh-huh. and it was amazing yeah so oh. it was her favorite tea product for me which is called majesty and we uh-huh. created a majesty soap and it's like one of her big sellers right now okay and yeah is there yeah my last question is just is there um anything you think that readers should know about um, about Danielle and her business or um, any hopes you might have for her and her business? You know, her business, is, it's handmade with love. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hope to see her in more stores or even expanding, to, you know, to a major distributor, hopefully. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all from the um, same area. So hopefully, I know they have a lot going on with JFK, like even if she could get her products there. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. And I love, again, like I'm meeting like more from her network and and how you guys are all connected and um, women of color. Thank you for even, you know, taking the time to highlight us. We do a lot of work and sometimes it goes unnoticed. Finally, if you know of a local business that you think Epicenter should feature, let us know. Drop us a note at hello at epicenter-nyc.com. That's all for today. Thanks for listening and thanks for supporting us as we do our best to support our community. We couldn't do it without you. For more stories like this, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at epicenter-nyc.com. Our intro music is All the Pretty Horses by Karavika. You can find more of their music on their website linked to in our podcast description. <laughs>